Hi guys, uh, today I'm going to be shooting a video on how to make this do-it-yourself LED light panel. It's pretty cool. I'm all tangled. It doesn't take very much time if you know, have a loose idea of what you're doing. I am, this is not necessarily what I do for a living per se, but it's something that I spent a lot of time doing. It probably, it arguably will take a lot of you a lot less time than it took me. Most of the time we'll be going into soldering, and even that's not, it's, you know, you could basically do this straight up in one day if you have the time and patience, and you'll still have plenty of time to spare. What you're gonna need, this is part of a completed one. I'm gonna do this in parts. Um, this is part of a completed one right here. You need the LED strips. Um, you can find them on Amazon or eBay, depending on its personal preference. I got, the, this is a double density 600 light strip and it comes in a spool which looks like this. And it holds, uh, it's like 16 and change feet if you're looking for a, a foot measurement. I have to re-adhere this, it came off a little bit, so I'll show you this one, because this one's totally done. This is basically what it looks like when it's done. I, you can see that like I kind of screwed up a little bit with the spacing on the bottom, but it ended up being fine. The difficulty that you might have is that with all of the ends of these, they're labeled clearly for like positive and negative, but you have to solder each individual connection by hand. I don't know if you can actually really see that. You have to solder each and every individual connection by hand, but they're labeled clearly. And then on the end of it, it's already got, if you're planning on using a battery, honestly, I chose not to. I might later and do another video, but this is for if you're trying to use a power supply. It's less portable, but you definitely have uh, the ability to have a nice bright, you know, shine. You don't have to worry about the battery starting to drain and not, you know, not being as bright. So yeah, you don't need very much. This is poster board, which I'll show you exactly, you know, I have the cardboard and everything. Pliers to hold the wire in place when you're soldering. Wire cutter, and I also use this to strip the insulation on the ends of the wire. Measuring tape for the PVC part, which I haven't totally finished yet, but I'll show you guys about what it's gonna, you know. Some string or something, anything like this. I tried to use fishing line and it actually like really didn't work, but I'll show you what that's for in a minute. A length, you can get them from Home Depot. It's a length of uh, half inch PVC pipe that was 10 feet long originally and it was cut down into two five foot lengths. And then these little, this is, this is a 45 degree angle connector for the PVC pipes that fits half inch pipe. And this is a, just a T connector that also fits half inch pipe. I'll show you what those are for in a minute. But for this, um, it's got an adhesive on the back of all the strips. So basically what you do is you just cut it out. And every like three lights, it's got a little line. And it's um, labeled on each side for positive and negative, And that's how you know where to cut it. So it's pretty easy to cut. And you just like adhere them. They fit really nicely. This 18 inches by 18 inches. It's a perfect square. And then you just solder. Obviously not every single one, but you alternate because it's like circuitry, you know, it goes. Yeah. And then this is already connected on the end. There are 12 volt lights, so you can find uh, power supplies pretty easily. Just make sure that you do your math correctly because the lights, depending on what you get, calculate the the amps and the, and the watts correctly. Otherwise your power supply isn't going to work. So usually it's 12 volts and then however many watts the lights are, that's how you determine the amps. You divide watts by volts and you get amps. So it's 48 watts and 12 volts, which means that your power supply needs to be compatible with 4 amps. And when it's all done, this is basically just like, it's basically just a laptop charger. So you would be surprised. I think this is like $13 at like a piece I got too. The light strips, you can find them for anywhere from like 5 to $10, depending on where you get them. I just happen to have the soldering materials at home anyway, but they're not particularly expensive. This is just a giant spool of the blue wire that I used. Um, you can't, I mean, it handles the current really well, surprisingly enough, for a wire that's kind of small. But don't go crazy with wire that's too big, thinking that, you know, you're going to need it, because the, the contacts on the actual LED strips 
are really, really tiny. And you have to be very careful when you're trying to tin them. I used tin solder for this. I think it worked the best. But let me just plug this in. And um, we'll see. I'm dropping things everywhere. We'll see what this looks like in basically broad daylight. I have two windows open on either side. And I have one fluorescent bulb light with five lights on it. So it kind of lighting in here is a little bit warmer than just the uh, window. But it's kind of bright. You don't want to look at it directly. Um, it's really bright. Um, if pointed at my ceiling in this room is white. So when pointed at a white ceiling, it really like it really lights a room well. <laughs> you you do not want to make the mistake of looking at this um, straight on without some kind of diffuser, or it will hurt your eyes. I made that mistake quite a few times, and it was very, very painful. The, the guy who is helping me shoot right now, I think I just blinded him. I'm really sorry. And then this is partially done, but even oh. even still, you can kind of see you know, how far, I've, how far I've gotten. And then what I'm essentially doing for the, the housing, these are from Home Depot. Um, this is actually two three foot lengths of the kind of, you, you use it to cover a gutter basically so that leaves and stuff don't go in it. But what I did was I, um, it's got this like ridge here. I don't know if you can see. Um, I got it from Home Depot. The, each one, each one was like, like, I don't know, four, no, maybe two or three dollars I think. I don't remember off the top of my head. It was really cheap. And I, that's what you use ribbon for. It's just to tie it in the little holes here so that it stays in a square. And then it, what you do is you cut it up to the ridge part and then fold it in half and it kind of make it kind of folds better, I've noticed, than if you could just cut it in two completely separate pieces. And then what I'm going to do is cover them completely in black. I'm not going to like spray paint it or anything, I'm going to completely cover it so the holes are covered. And then it'll kind of have, it'll be like a barn door for like a tungsten light. Yeah, and then after everything is all said and done, I'll purchase some kind of um, diffuser so that, you know, you don't have the striped effect whenever you're trying to use it for room lighting. Um, and it should, you know, it should be really easy. So all together, I'll tally it up in the in the description for this video how much everything costs exactly because I don't, I don't remember off the top of my head, honestly. Um, and then in the event that any of the little light strips do come off in any place, I have this, like, I have this for scrapbooking. It's an Elmer's Dot Runner. It's just this little, you know, you... The non-liquid whiteout, basically, in the way that you apply it. And it sticks really, it sticks really well, honestly. And it's cheaper than most glue dots I've found, at least. And then for the PVC part, we have this length. Um, this is a five foot length. And I have these measurements on the bottom, and it looks really odd, but I promise they make sense. This bottom line is 12 inches from the bottom of the pipe. You can see, because uh, it, it's going to be a tripod, basically. This, there's three spaces here. And each one of them is the size of one of these T connectors for like the different angles that the feet are gonna go. And then um, in addition, there are measurements um, half in, half an inch um, uh, below and above those lines, so that I can kind of get a feel for how much of the pipe itself actually goes into the T connectors, so that once it's all said and done and attached and adhered, the T connectors, the bases of, will be flush with one another. And then out of the um, each T connector, so that it's not just obviously like sticking straight out. You have these 45 degree angle connectors, and they come out and obviously like go to the floor. You just have to be careful when you're measuring for those because obviously because the different ones are different heights. The length of pipe that comes out of the 45 degree angle connector is going to differ with every foot. And then at the end of those, you can just I think they're seven eighths of an inch. The little feet that you put on the bottom of like furniture or something and it just slips on the bottom and you can get those too and it will prevent it from sliding around if you're using like an indoor floor or space or anything and it's also helpful outside if you're using it outside for but yeah this is it's really really straightforward i'll i'll do um, another part of the video where i show like excuse me tips on like soldering and everything just don't make the mistake of trying to cut the gutter stuff with a pair of kitchen shears like I did because yeah I squeezed too hard and the handle part broke. That was a bad mistake. 
And then you can just use electrical tape on um, the other end of the length, which is these, you know, these two little wires in case you're going to connect it to another strip. You can just cover it with electrical tape or um, one of the plastic caps that you would use if you're like an electrician. They're all, it's all really cheap materials. You can go to your local hardware store or Home Depot and get all of them. And then this, for the cardboard on the back there, it's nothing special. I chose this because I had seen in other videos that obviously like it just makes sense that you would use something with white on it. So, and um, our trifold was the best. So you can see like the parts that are missing on each part are the 18 by 18 inch squares. And there's just enough cardboard that you can get the, like two out of it. Yeah, so it's helpful kind of for traveling if you don't make the mistake that I did. Um, for one of them, you can see if you look at them, there's the fold. The fold. And um, you want to make sure that your light strips are running parallel to it instead of perpendicular. Other, um, otherwise, kind of messes up the glue. But for this, it's like kind of easy. If you need to travel with it, you can like kind of fold it a little bit. It's like not so, you know. I wouldn't fold it in half necessarily unless you make sure that if there's a connection like here, um, right on, oh shit, I just messed up the, have to re-solder that one connection, it just came out a little bit. Um, you want to make sure that, uh, you make sure that there's enough length there, which I made the mistake of not doing, so that when you try to move it around, it kind of like almost, you know, kind of pulls it out a little bit. Then the other thing, I don't know if I already said this, I probably already did, um, measuring tape. Very, very important. Measure twice, cut once, you know the drill. And have these like little extra pieces where I screwed up really badly and like the, you want to make sure that when you tin each connection, obviously the tin on each one can't touch each other, otherwise it, it basically ruins it. So make sure that when you're tinning each connection that you do like very, very small amounts. Otherwise, it will just form one bulb, and then you'll have to cut off that little, like, length of three lights. And it kind of, you know, so one of these is 600 lights, and the other one is 597 lights, <laughs> because I had to cut this little thing off. But, yeah, that's the general gist. It's not really a whole heck of a lot to it. You can use the two five-foot length, well, two of your four altogether, five-foot length, for the actual stand part. And then the other five foot length, you can use and cut it up into the pieces that are going to be the legs. And then the other pieces that are going to connect all of the, you know, the T's to the 45 degree angle ones. Um, but just make sure you measure very carefully and I'll provide all of my measurements in another video once I finish everything up. Yeah. So that's about everything. I'm going to do like a series of videos. I'll do one about this and I'll do one about my board because I have this nice... I don't know if it's in the frame or not, I can't exactly see, no. but I have, if you can't see, I have this really cool Yamaha soundboard that I have my microphone connected to, and I'll do a video on like my equipment and everything. Yeah, I'm lucky enough to have the luxury of being able to do these shoots whenever I want, yay! Yeah, so, thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, feel free to comment, feel free to subscribe, I'll be doing these videos in the future a lot, and yeah, that's about it. Bye!